get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Now I'm gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing fine, man. Gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got two show to give, let out. I want to sing and shout, take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening, and together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me. That's right. Hello and welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm Irish Dave. I'm here at the Regis Philbin Theatre. Next week on the show, you're going to find out all that's happening at the DeBartolo, so make sure and tune in for that. This week, Kelly and I were out and about. Kelly went to the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra. I was in Goshen at the Ignition Music Garage. But first, Kelly was in Elkhart at the Civic Theatre to find out about a performance going on there called Lucky Stiff. Today we're at the Elkhart Civic Theatre and all we can say is get ready for a show filled with murder, mystery, diamonds, and a dead body. <laughs> okay, well, Brock, Stephanie, and John, thank you so much for being with us today. And I have to say that this is a musical, it's Lucky Stiff. It's a musical that not many people may have heard of, but it is absolutely hilarious. And Brock, you are the director for the show. I am. Well, tell us about, well, how did you discover the show and, and you decided to bring it here to this community? So we actually did this show uh, in 2000. Uh, these two were both in it uh, <laughs> then. Uh, John's playing the same part he played 22 years ago and Stephanie is playing a different part. Um, I was a kid when we did it last time, so I didn't see oh, it. Oh, you see, he's kind of, you know, <laughs> shaving you guys. He's like All throwing right. shade. I, I, I didn't see it. It's a little bit more PG-13, um, so I didn't see this show when we did it last time. But on the production committee, we were talking about shows that we'd want to bring back. And everybody said, Lucky Stiff, Lucky Stiff, Lucky Stiff. And I was like, I don't know it. Um, and then I read the script, and I looked at the video of when we did it last time, and it is absolutely hilarious. It's a real gem that not enough people know. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm sure you're pretty excited that people will have an opportunity to see this. Yes, for sure. Um, this is definitely a show that I don't think it's been done in the area since we did it last time. And it is just, it's like a farce, mm -hmm. but put to music. Um, and there's just not many shows like that, where it's just so fast paced and people going in one door and coming out another. And, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Now, I did have a chance to see the show, and one of the things that really intrigued me was the dead body. And so as a director, how do you direct a dead body? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, Stephanie's husband is actually uh, the dead body, uh, and uh, he just started coming to rehearsals, I think, last week. Yeah. Um, and he's got it down pretty pat. He's, <laughs> he doesn't move. We do a lot of movement to him, um, a lot of shtick with him falling over because the whole conceit is that the nephew knows that he's dead but nobody else knows that he's dead so he's passing him off that he's alive um, so Tim's got to be pretty limp and flexible and he is he's great <laughs> okay all right well we'll have to come and see that but I'm sure I'll take your word for it though now Stephanie you were in it before yes and who did you play before before I played Annabelle, who is kind of the younger um, character from the dog home, and this time I get to play Rita, which is a lot more fun and crazy. <laughs> I love, I have to say, I absolutely love Rita. How do you um, enjoy playing her? Oh, it's great. Um, I am, I'm actually Italian, so the, the, hey! Italian part of, the Italian part of the character is great. Um, so I get to kind of play that crazy, zany, just totally impatient character that is um, actually pretty, you know, in my background. So <laughs> it actually works really well. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. And now, John, you were in it as well before. I was. And you're playing the same part. I am playing the same character, which I never thought I would say. Yeah, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I love him. He's, he's, uh, First of all, this show is probably one of my favorite shows of all time, but this is probably one of my favorite characters that I've ever played. So I'm, I'm really excited to be able to bring him back onto the stage again. So your fa one of your favorite characters, what's his name? Vincent DeRuccio. And so. tell us, uh, so what's, he's an optometrist. He's an but... optometrist, he's a little bit of a milk toast. Um, and uh, his sister gets him into a real mess. Not Rita. Uh, no, 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 Rita, yeah. <laughs> And uh, they end up having to fly off to Monaco to try and figure out how to fix the situation. And, uh, and uh, in the process, uh, there are plane crashes and uh, I don't know, it's just you name it, everything happens to this guy. And, uh, including uh, a fight with his wife on the telephone. So it's, it's yeah. all good. 
Oh my God, and by the way, one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> one of my favorite scenes. Now, how does it feel to play the same character 20 years later? What are some of the, um, maybe the pros, and what are some of the challenges you might have with sure. it now? Well, uh, 20 years ago, I was definitely more limber. <laughs> so uh, I, I wasn't as afraid, uh, for example, in the phone call, which y'all have to come see, mm -hmm. uh, of hurting myself. But <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, uh, 20 years later, it's like, oh, this could get a little bit challenging. But uh, I, the idea just that uh, I, I'm finding new things, but at the same time, it's really like a glove. I just, I, it slides right on and it feels so comfortable. That's great. Now, well, how is the relationship with the two of you? Um, um, on stage, well, on, as brothers. On stage. On stage. <laughs> oh, no, no, on no, no, stage. no. They're on stage. On stage, just a little bit, kind of a brother-sister, obviously, relationship. Well, I mean, she but, carries a gun on the But I carry the show. a gun, and I'm a chain smoker. <laughs> he has asthma, so, you know, it's kind of that uh, very challenging relationship of me kind of dragging him into all kinds of things oh. that he doesn't want to be in, and him just shaking his head like, oh, no. <laughs> so basically, it's your fault. It's always my fault. <laughs> it's kind of always your fault. Always now, Brock, fault. How, how has it been directing this ensemble? I mean, um, I, I heard you mention that it's not a huge cast, so it's, it's you know, a little bit closer knit. Yeah, uh, so last time we did the show, we expanded the chorus. I think there was 17, 18 people in it or something I mean, like that, something 16, like 17. Yeah. Um, and this time we did it with 10, which is um, how it was originally done off Broadway. Um, it's more of a challenge, I would say, but it's a little, it's, it's also really fun um, because the ensemble of four play like 35 characters between them. So they walk off one second and come back on as another character two seconds later. So it's, it's been a lot of fun and it's a really, really strong ensemble um, of all generations of talent here at Elkhart Civic. So it's, it's been a great experience. Now the show opens November 11th. Where are you in the rehearsal process? About two and a half weeks. We're about from now. two and a half weeks out. Mm -hmm. um, so the rehearsal process is moving along <laughs> very smoothly. Um, we're, we're, we're adding costumes and, um, and get working on the set. Um, right now it just has one coat on it, so it's not done yet. Um, but but we're, we're moving along and we're really excited to share this with our community. Now, one of the things you just mentioned about the generations, and I think that's one of the most beautiful things about community theater, is that it's um, people in the community, and you see that kind of being um, passed down generation to generation. Matter of fact, you see shows where the parents and the, and the children are in the same show together, and there's, it's really a priceless experience. Mm -hmm. it, really, it really is, and that's an experience that you really only get with community mm -hmm. theater. Um, in terms of doing theater, it's something really specific to community theater that I I just love. I started here when I was 12. Um, Throwing John, shade again, bro. John and, <laughs> John and Stephanie, I mean, I grew up, they were my mentors. Yeah. Um, and I'm where I am today because of, because of these two, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's been my little brother for a long time. <laughs> the first show we did together, he was 12, so. Well, as being, as being you know, two of his mentors, how does it feel to have him in the director's seat? Um, he does a great job and I love working job. with him, so. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, uh, watching him grow over the years and really uh, define his love for theater has been exciting. And then uh, uh, we went for a year without an artistic director, almost two, uh, and uh, it's nice to have him here. Uh, he's got a great eye. How does it feel passing down the reins there, oh, the I, baton? It's, it's great. I, you know, it's it's nice, especially when you know they're that it's being handled by a, a good professional. So, absolutely. So again, the show starts November 11th, and uh, what are the days? Uh, November 11th, 12th, and 13th, and then 18th, 19th, 20th. Okay, and how can people get tickets? People can get tickets by uh, visiting our website, elkhartcivictheater.org. It's theater with an R-E. Um, or they can call our box office from Monday, Monday through Friday from 1 to 5.30. Our number is 848-4116. All right. All right, well, thank you so much, and good luck to the show. And please come and see Lucky Stiff. You will not be sorry. You will be rolling down the aisles, seriously. It's hilarious. I'm here at Ignition Music Garage. 
Julie, can I just say garage? That's kind of how I say it. Is that okay? <laughs> That's acceptable. No, is that okay? <laughs> uh, I'm here with Julie, who's the co-owner and operator of the record store here. I feel a little bit bad because I come to Goshen every week. I've been here several times this week, even at the Electric Brew, which is just next door, the cafe. And I didn't actually know that you guys were here. Do you hear that quite a bit? I do, unfortunately. Well, after today, you know, after this, you're going to be good. But how long has the store actually been here? Over 10 years. Uh, it used to be an actual garage, which is why we kept the Ignition Music Garage. Mm -hmm. um, it has a very industrial feel to it. Um, yeah, we used to have, a, this used to be one building, so we had the door open between the coffee shop and the record store for a long time. But when we split the building up, code and all of that. So <laughs> now we are two separate buildings. <laughs> so we used to get a lot of traffic from in between the record or the coffee shop in here. So. So what is the beauty of vinyl still being so attractive to people? Well, I think it's a couple things. Uh, the first thing is it just sounds better. Um, and the second thing, I really think it's, it's tangible. People for so long have just been putting their phone on mm -hmm. and listening to music, a uh, vinyl, you can hold, it has beautiful artwork. Mm -hmm. um, you can open it, some of them are gatefolds, which you can open and they have more artwork inside. Mm -hmm. um, every song is listed out. You can see who plays on the song. Um, you can see what instruments are used on the album. There's just so much information on the album itself. Mm -hmm. So I think people that really appreciate music uh, like that and appreciate that. It also, to listen to it, becomes more of an intentional act that you get to actually sit down, take a moment. It's kind of like sitting down and reading a book or sitting down and watching a it's TV a show. It's meditation for people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just a transactional like music on in the car. It's an actual, like, I'm intentionally sitting down for 45 minutes and listening to this entire album. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to have a look around. There's so many things here. There's a radio studio over in the corner, which I'm just like dying to crack open the mic there and talk, but there's lots of things we want to see, so let's have a look around. Okay. All right, so Julie, this, you've got everything here. Obviously, you can't have records without a record player, so what are some of the brands that you use? Why do you even carry this brand? Okay, so we are a certified Audio Technica dealership. Mm -hmm. So this is their base model, it's the LP60. Uh, it starts at around $150. Uh, and then the one I really like is the LP120. They run 350 now. What's and the difference? So, <laughs> good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just wondering because I'm like, I hear 150, I hear 350. I'm like, eh, if it plays the record, what do I care? Like, you know, so. The nice thing about Audio Technica, these new players, is they come with a built in preamp that you can turn on and off. Okay. So, you really can grow. You can pare it down, you can have your bare bones, or you can you know, grow into it, which is what this one really allows you to do. Mm -hmm. This is just a basic record player. Uh, it has a straight tone arm here. Um, it has a start stop button. It comes, drops the needle down. You can walk away. It picks it up, puts it back when you're done. Um, you can pair it with, I like these Edifier speakers. They mm -hmm. sound really good. Amazing, yeah. They come in different wattages. So you can kind of, for how loud you want your music, you mm -hmm. can decide that. Um, and this is all you really need. You don't have to buy um, big expensive speakers or uh, integrated amplifier. But if you wanted, wanted those things later, you could always add them. Um, this record player here, the LP120, um, you, you have the S-shaped tone arm, which tracks a little bit better on the record. Okay. You have the weights and balances, the anti-skip. It allows um, for a lot more control over your listening experience. Uh, and it also comes with a half inch um, head shell so you can change your cartridge, upgrade your cartridge maybe later. The two most important things for me for your listening experience is a really nice cartridge and needle on your record player and some nice speakers. So those are the two things that really elevate your listening experience. And there is nothing better, in my opinion, than that like crackly sound at the start of a record. Some just, people love it, some people oh hate it. It's so. like one of my favorite sounds. I don't, I don't mind it either. Um, I love it. I just, I just think there's so, like, I don't know, there's like, I romanticize that sound so much in my head. I just think it's like, there's something to me that's just, you just don't get with turning on Spotify or yeah. telling your 
whatever smart speaker to play a song, you know? So, yeah, so yeah I totally love it. And you've headphones too, just in case you're really bugging your partner oh. by playing your music <laughs> or super your loud. So or... That's important too. Yeah, yeah. Headphones. Uh, we have some vintage equipment too. I have a couple people that do a really good job rehabbing, rehabbing mm -hmm. old um, or vintage stereos. Mm -hmm. So these have been cleaned up. Um, and yeah, no, ready I, to go. I bet there's a few people watching who are like, I recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> so, records in general, you've got a huge variety here. Yes. Most of them I know. <laughs> um, how much does it cost in general for records? Because it's definitely something that it's a little bit of an investment, right? Like in terms, it's not. You know, I not super expensive. I have a bargain bin where you can buy records for a dollar, two dollar, three dollars. They're like classic, a lot of easy listening, maybe some older stuff. If you find a really good title in there, you might want to check the record out for the quality because it might be more about the cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but there, I mean, you can you can invest a dollar, you can invest fifty dollars. It really depends. Yeah. Um, the new records for us, the margin is better on the used, so we try and buy used off people and resell it. Um, we buy lots of collections off people, um, find them new homes. Um, the new vinyl is a little bit um, harder to come by right now because it's so popular, but I try and keep good titles stocked when I can. And then um, twice a year they do a record store day and then they do a Black Friday mm -hmm. event um, and they'll release like, they did this Ultravox for record store day this year. Um, so I see like a lot of familiar names from like the 70s, 80s, like Neil Young, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Um, how many artists from today actually even release vinyl? Even if it's hard to come by, like, do they all release vinyl now? Like, does Pretty much. Bruno Mars, and I say artists of today, I Bruno Mars. I think I have like, a Bruno Mars record <laughs> over uh, there, yeah. There you go. So, so they, like Taylor Swift, they still release vinyl? She still... just put a new album out too. So, yeah. So yeah, they, I think it's the one format that they really want to be on. So in here, in Ignition Music Garage, you'll see that there's a radio studio for 91.1 The Globe, which is the Goshen College radio station. And you'll also see this stage here. So Julie, who comes here? Like oh my gosh, we've <laughs> had some of the most incredible people play here. Uh, John Spencer from John Spencer's Blues Explosion's been here. Modesky, John Modesky from Modesky Martin and Wood. Bill Frizzell, who's an amazing, jazz player mm -hmm. um, but we do all sorts of shows we like to do uh, local shows we do um, some metal showcases is what we call them because there's not really a place where the metal bands or hard rock bands can play around here mm -hmm. uh, like I said before this is a very industrial space so <laughs> what um, are the acoustics like when they're great <laughs> yeah. the room is sound uh, has been sound tuned Oh, um, nice. it's, uh, it sounds really good. It's uh, more of a listening room. Mm -hmm. uh, the hard rock shows, <laughs> it, they're just loud. So, so <laughs> how often, like, is it on a schedule or like how often do people play here? Where, where can people actually see the schedule of? So our website, ignitionmusic.net, uh, Facebook has a list, I think, of all of our upcoming events as well. You can buy tickets online. You can get tickets in the store. Nice. You can give us a call. We'll help you. Uh, we have a couple of events here a month. Uh, Paul Thorne will be here November 10th. Then we have uh, Tis the Season is every other year we do a holiday event with uh, Carrie Lee Kendall and she puts on, it's kind of like a variety show. There's song, there's dance, there's poetry reading sometimes and it's always sells out. So it's a really, really nice thing to do for the community. It's nice. It's uh, I don't want it to be a hidden gem anymore, but it really is a beautiful space. There's a really nice atmosphere in here. Um, it just feels really chill, which kind of kind of <laughs> goes with the vibe of like vinyl, you know. Yeah. And it just I don't know. It feels like a cool hangout spot. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I hope uh, everyone watching comes and visits at least, and yeah. just gets to know you and gets to know the store and what you stand for. And yeah, hope they visit. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It is always such a delight to be with Tim King, the executive director of the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra. But before we say anything, Tim,
from WNIT Experience Michiana to you. We say happy anniversary. Oh, thank you. Not your, you're not 50. No, no, I'm not 50. <laughs> I wish I was 50, but. <laughs> but the LaPorte County Symphony yes. Orchestra. Oh my goodness, yeah. congratulations. It's a real milestone. Um, a, a lot of orchestras don't even make it to 50. As you know, they're nonprofit organizations and you have lean years and good years. But fortunately, we are at our 50th year and things are going quite well. That's great. And you know, like you mentioned about the arts organizations, it has been quite a, a, a challenging years with the <laughs> pandemic and everything. How did you kind of maneuver through all of that? Well, when the pandemic happened, um, uh, March of 2020, literally we had a concert that particular weekend and I had to cancel it two days before the concert. Uh, and so everything was just up in the air. We did have to postpone two concerts. We had a concert in March and concert in April of 2020. But, <clears throat> but after that second postponement, um, our interim music director, Chuck Steck, who's also our principal trumpeter and associate conductor, and I got together and we said, this is ridiculous. We gotta figure something out. Nobody was moving anywhere, no, nothing was going on. And so we have two medical doctors in our orchestra. They're very, very fine musicians. So Chuck and I went to them and we said, is there any way that we can continue playing? And they said, yes, you've got to have a mask and you have to play six feet apart. Um, so with the winds, they had to construct sort of masks around their bells, oh, around, wow. around the trumpets and the winds. And because here in the Civic Auditorium, because it's not a regular auditorium, mm -hmm. we were able to spread the musicians out. Half of them were on the stage and half of them were on the floor. So they were able to keep that six feet distance mm -hmm. and we were still able to make music. So. What happened with all that was we had a lot of musicians that said, gosh, I feel like I'm playing a solo all the time because they're, just like, they're right. used to playing together. So but they said we would rather do this as opposed to not playing at all. So then we just started playing and we started rehearsing and playing and sometimes with an audience, sometimes without an audience. And we were the only orchestra in Indiana that continued to play during that time. And I credit two things. I credit our two doctors mm -hmm. and I credit the Civic Auditorium for, able, for us being able to do that. And I'm happy to report that we did not have one COVID case during that entire time. That is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it oh. worked. It worked for yeah, us. Yeah, no, that is fantastic. Now, 50 years. Yeah. What are you going to do for this concert? Because this, this is a big one, Tim. It's big. It, it's big. Well, we're so fortunate to have Carolyn Watson, our, our music director. It's her second year coming in. Mm -hmm. And what she's done is every concert that we're doing this year, she took a look at the very first year of programming. And she's put one piece on every concert this year that was played in the first year year. Oh, that's As a great a, idea. I know, it was a great idea. She came up with that, so we'll be doing that. Um, and then we're going to be doing uh, American music, uh, Aaron Copeland, the fanfare for the common man, and uh, uh, music from Rodeo. And we're doing um, selections from Porgy and Bess by George Gershwin, and selections from West Side Story from Leonard Bernstein with three outstanding vocal soloists that are going to be joining us. That is wonderful. And then you also have some high school students that are going to be We involved. do. Uh, this year we have five student apprentices. And what we started this program a couple of years ago, Ago, where we audition talented high school musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't have to be from LaPorte County. They can be from St. Joseph County, Porter Lake. As long as they can make it to the rehearsals and to the performances, they get paid just like another oh. member of the orchestra. So we had these auditions this year and we have five young musicians, juniors and seniors, two trumpeters, a percussionist, a tubist, and a flutist. Oh my that, goodness, that are gonna that's be, great. From three different schools uh, here in the area. So they are going to be playing a solo? No, they're no. gonna be part of the orchestra. Okay. So our orchestra is normally 55, we have 60 now with, with the five student apprentices, but they were there last, we had our first rehearsal last night for this concert and they were right there in the thick of it. That's great and what a wonderful experience for someone yeah. in high school, especially to get paid. Well that, and they play much harder literature than they normally would in a high school situation. So uh, we've had several student apprentices that are now majoring in music in college who feel like they got a leg up a little bit because they, they some of this music that they played, they never would have been able to play in high school and made them play better next to a professional. That's so true. Now the soloist, the vocalist that yeah. you mentioned, are they from LaPorte? They're not, they're not. We have, uh, Carolyn has worked with all three of these people before. It's Amanda Sheriff, soprano, Alex Sherman, who's our tenor, and Nicholas Davis, who's our bass baritone, will be singing selections for both Porgy and Bess and West Side Story. I haven't met them yet. They're coming in, um, but I've 
talked with each of them over the phone and email. Carolyn says they're wonderful to deal with. And if Carolyn says they're wonderful, they're wonderful. I'm not worried about that. And speaking of wonderful, Carolyn is wonderful. She is pretty <laughs> terrific. She really is. She just recently took a position with the University of Illinois. So she was at the University of Kansas. So now with her being at the University of Illinois as the director of orchestras there, she's a lot closer geographically yes. to us. So now it takes her three hours to drive instead of all day on a plane to get to us this time. So we're all happy about that situation. Yes, and, and talk a little bit about the Civic Auditorium yeah. here. Because I came, it was back in the spring, yeah. and that was the concert where you were doing movies, yes. music, and, and the I The John just, Williams concert. And I just want to say something, Tim. I, I, I came here, it was my first time, mm -hmm. and the energy that was here, <laughs> well, it was almost like a football game. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm trying to explain it. Yeah. But what you have created here in the community is fantastic. Oh. There was so much energy. People were so excited to Thank be you. here. And I, I mean, it, it is just such a wonderful musical community. Thank you, I appreciate that. Well, the situation here is a little different because we put tables on the floor. So a lot of companies and individuals buy entire tables and so they can socialize with each other prior to the concert and during intermission. And then of course we have the seats in, in the balcony in the U shape. <clears throat> and that's been part of it. I think they like the, the socialization that they're able to do where you can't really get that in an auditorium situation. Uh, between that and just the great programming that Carolyn does and she always kind of leaves them wanting more. Yes. And I, I really like that. We keep our programs to about two hours, no more than that with an intermission, and people always say, oh, can you just play one more piece? And nope, come back next time. Right, right. <laughs> but it, it was fantastic. Thank and you. I, you sat me at a table, Tim. Thank uh, you yes, so much. Yes, absolutely. And it was great, the socializing, and people came in costumes. Yes. And at the end of the program, I mean, the, everyone was on their feet. Yeah. And it was, yeah. Everyone was <laughs> It shouting. was a great way to end the season. It really was, it was. Now, can you give us a sneak peek as to what's coming, perhaps, for the holidays? Yes. Uh, well, after this concert, November the 5th, our next concert will be our Holiday at the Pops concert, which is always the second Saturday in December. Mm -hmm. It's December the 10th, 7 p.m., same situation, tables on the floor, people in the back. Balcony. We're expecting a sellout on that one because a lot of people uh, for the past three years, I mean, one year we just did a live stream. We didn't have anybody. Uh, and then another year we had about 400 and then last year we had about 1200. This year we feel like we can have a full house this is time. And it's a lot of people have told me that they don't feel like the holiday season has started until they attend the orchestra's concert at Holiday of the Pop. So we have programs already set. It's all on our website at lcso.net. You can purchase tickets or just if you want to browse the website and learn more about the orchestra. That is wonderful. So again, the Americana concert is yes. November 5th. Yes. And they can get tickets? They can get tickets at lcso.net mm -hmm. and we'll have tickets probably available at the door that night. We're on central time so I want people to understand that. That's We're on right. central time. <laughs> Our doors open at six o'clock. The concert starts at seven. Okay wonderful. All right well I'm traveling on November 5th oh. but I'm putting my tickets in <laughs> for the Holiday Pops oh, good. concert. I want good. my we, tickets. <laughs> we would love to have you come to Holiday All Pops. All right Thank Tim you. thanks so much for being with us as always and again congratulations on 50 years. Uh, thanks Kelly. Appreciate it. So that is it for this week's episode of Experience Michiana. Don't forget, if there's something that you think we should experience, make sure and follow us on Facebook and send us a message on there with your suggestion. And make sure that you tune in next week to find out why I'm here. There's so many great things going on here at the DeBartolo Performing Arts Center in Notre Dame. And you and your family should definitely go along to them. So tune in next week to Experience Michiana. Experience Michiana is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the State of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.